Welcome to the Bosman Viewing, and this is episode 4 of Play On. This is the section of the Bosman Viewing, it's a little bit more relaxed, and we pick a football topic to talk about, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. And for today's football topic of choice, it's all about Danielson. If you want to look at what happened to the one-time world's most expensive player. Right, so I guess the best place to start is back to the time before he got the big money move in 1998. To see what it was that put Danielson in the shop window for every major club in Europe, in the mid to late 90s there was a big market for young and up and coming Brazilian players, thanks mostly to a certain player called Ronaldo. He tore up La Liga with Barcelona in his single season at the club, who ironically he was the world record transfer himself prior to Danielson getting his move when he signed for Inter Milan. Along with Ronaldo, another Brazilian who played a more similar role to Danielson was Rivaldo. He was also lighting up La Liga during that time with Deportivo. This ramped up the demand for exciting Brazilian players and clubs in Europe were more than happy to spend the money needed to get them. At this point, Denilson was still playing in Brazil with Sao Paulo, where he was showing off his dribbling skills and tricks, but he was struggling to score enough goals and consistently provide the needed end product. Then we get to France 98, and after being a part of the national team for a few years, Denilson was called up to the World Cup squad. Although he wasn't expected to start every game, the Brazil coach Mario Zagallo had high hopes for what he could bring to the tournament. He was quoted as saying at the time, Danielson is a remarkable player, someone who can do the unexpected and damage the opposition. We will use him when we think he can have the most impact. Someone else who had high hopes for Danielson was Nike, who had Danielson play a big role in the World Cup ad campaign for France 98, looking at him to be the next great Brazilian player. After showing glimpses of his talent during the tournament and helping Brazil get to the final, that kicked off a bidding war between two Spanish clubs for his signature. One of these clubs was Barcelona, now with plenty of cash since the sale of Ronaldo, and the other club was a little bit more unexpected, Real Betis. Each club would continue to outbid each other over and over again, until eventually Barcelona decided against being involved in another world record transfer, especially for a player who was unproven in Europe and had only scored a handful of goals in four seasons in Brazil. Rumour has it that Danielson thought he was going to Barcelona throughout the entire transfer saga, until Real Betis submitted the final, world record bid of around £21.5 million that was accepted by Sao Paulo. Betis then took it one step further and were so confident in their new star signing, they gave him a 10 year contract worth around £40,000 per week, making him one of the highest paid players in world football at that time. Everything was set up for him to become the next Brazilian superstar, but things didn't quite go to plan. In his first season as the world's most expensive player, the skills and tricks were all there for everyone to see, but just like before, he lacked the final product in crucial moments. Danielson was only able to score two goals in 35 games and was unable to help his new team finish higher than 11th in La Liga. Things went from bad to worse as the following season, Betis were relegated from La Liga, not something anyone expected after spending that amount of money on the hottest prospect in world football. Although Danielson did help Real Betis get promoted back to La Liga, from that moment on, he became more of a fringe player and was being used as an impact sub. People point to his struggles at that time, saying it was because of the lack of quality around him or the tactics used didn't play to his strengths, but whatever the case, no matter what way you look at it, Danielson ultimately became a very expensive bit part player. He'd end up staying at Betis for 7 years of that 10 year contract, and he was never able to score more than 3 goals in a season during his time in Spain. The only real success Danielson actually had through all those years was on the international stage, as he was still a part of the Brazilian national team and he helped his country win the World Cup in 2002. By 2003 though, he'd played his last game for Brazil at the age of just 25 years old. From this point on, Danielson would become somewhat of a journeyman, with Betis allowing him to leave to join Bordeaux, where he'd only stay for one season, before going on to have short stints playing in Saudi Arabia, America, back in Brazil, before even shorter spells in Vietnam and Greece. It was ultimately a sad ending for what started out as one of the most promising careers in football. But one thing's for sure, thanks to those flicks and tricks, Danielson will never be forgotten. Alright, well that's our discussion and take on what happened to Danielson. We hope you enjoyed the video and give us your feedback in the comments section below or if there's any other football topics you want covered, let us know. While you're here, you should check out the other videos on the channel and if you could thumbs this one up, that'd be great, it really helps. Subscribe for more and I'll see you on the next one.